Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Holly Flame Maxi. And we're going to be discussing her amazing poetry book, The Struggle to Find True Love. That's available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. And I do want to take this opportunity and quickly point out that Holly was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by one of the best publishers in the business, City of Books. So if you or anyone you know have a book that they'd like moved, people, I'm telling you, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give. Contact City of Books. See what they can do for you. They're one of the best in the business to do it, and they specialize in taking your literary creation to the next level. Contact their fantastic team today and see how they can help you. To gather more information on them, head on over to cityofbooks.com. And listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Holly here on the line. We're going to discuss some of her poetry today, but by the time we're done with this interview, you're going to run to her Amazon Barnes & Noble pages and pick up your book because the relatability factor alone is something that you're going to want to get involved with because I'm telling you, we've all been there, right? We've all been down that path and experienced the butterflies, right? Experienced the heartbreak when it doesn't work out. So I'm really looking forward to this. I know you all are as well. And at the end of the day, Holly's the expert. She's written the poetry and she's going to be able to articulate it much better than I ever could. So let's bring her here with us. Holly, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction. And thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Absolutely. Listen, it's It's an honor to be here. Holly, you're too kind. The honor is all ours. We're really looking forward to this. I meant what I said in my intro. I I think a subject of this magnitude is something we can all relate to, regardless of where you are in life and where you are on that journey to find your true love. This is something we all understand. This is something we can all relate to. So right there, I'm backing you already, girl. I'm I'm with you. I love it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Holly, before we go into the book, I do think it's important to start by learning a little bit more about yourself. So please, tell myself, tell our listening audience a little bit more about your background. Well, I started writing I started writing poetry in high school. Um, I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, Johns Hopkins Hospital, the best hospital ever. In the 19th century, I mean, that's hard for me to believe, but it just, just seems like yesterday. But I love traveling. My, zodiac, my Chinese zodiac sign is a dragon. So I take that as me. I'm fierce. So, like, I love talking to people and learning about different people, and that's where uh, that's probably why I start writing poetry. Um, I lived in a couple different countries. I lived in Jordan and Egypt, and I've been in Germany for a week. So um, I have exposure to a lot of places, and I was a truck driver for two years, which gave me a, a lot of insight on human human behavior. It's very interesting, truck drivers. I went to all 48 states in America, and um, right now I'm just settling in South Jersey. I'm living in the country with my kids and, and just loving life, that's all. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, we're going to have to invite you back on the network, Holly, not to discuss this book, not to discuss any other books you've read in the future, but just to discuss your background, because it is wonderfully eclectic, and I'm sure you have stories for days, especially about being a truck driver, right, being on the road. I'm sure you've experienced a lot, and we'd love to hear all about it, of course, and we'll save that for a later date, because today is all about your book, The Struggle to Find True Love. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, the book was the book is like a real time book. Um, I met someone, and uh, I, I was always nonverbal growing up, so like I had a hard time talking and how I feel. So I just wrote all the poems in the book, and then it wasn't supposed to be a book; it was just it was just a journal. And then I decided, hey, let me just publish it, so like everybody who reads this book will be like saying a small prayer that we fall in love and get happy and be married. Mm-hmm. And um, then that I realized, you know what, the book wasn't really about him; it was about me and about how I want to feel when I do find that person. Because actually just recently I I did find someone who is so much more than I could ever imagine, and I'm grateful that he's in my life. Uh, I talk to him all the time, and I feel like going through this experience has made me a better person, and I'm more expressive now. 
You know, listen, Ali, uh, first and foremost, congratulations. I love hearing that. And also, you know, it, it makes me think, like, love is so liberating, is it? I mean, you talk about how you're more expressive now through this relationship that you found. And how beautiful is that? And again, liberating to to have and to feel. I'm telling you, people, I am a romantic at heart. I'm for this. Okay, this is fantastic. You know, Holly, I want to go into inspiration because you've already started to go there. When it came to this book, when it came to the poets, the poetry that you were writing, as you stated, it was developed through a previous partner or at least a previous relationship. But you recognized through that your poems weren't really about him. They were about you and what you wanted. Now, this very easily could have been something that stayed on your personal shelf. And I know you started to go into it. But I want to dive a little deeper, Holly. Why did you feel compelled or inspired to put the book out for the masses? Well, I, I thought that a lot of people probably feel the same way I do. Like, there's someone out there that they feel like they really belong with, you know, and that the universe yeah. has just brought them together. But, but then you have to realize that um, I, I just wanted this book to be a small prayer. I thought that if everybody read this book, it would be like sending a prayer up to God and the universe, mm. and I, I would be able to manifest this man to love me back. But then I realized um, I'm better. I'm better than that. I don't need to pray or beg someone for attention. I, there's someone out there who, who loves me for who I am and who will accept me for who I am, and I'm ready for them. People, again, we're here on the line with Holly Flame Maxi. We're discussing her poetry book, The Struggle to Find True Love, available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. You know, Holly... I love what you're saying there because, listen, I completely agree, right? I've only known you for a very short time. But, listen, anybody that doesn't want to be in your life or isn't proving themselves, because I think anybody that's been in relationships understands is a lot of work, okay? And it's not 50-50, okay? Let's also point that out, people. When we're talking about relationships, you may want it to be 50-50, but we know when it comes to partnerships, man, listen, sometimes it's going to be 70-30. Sometimes it's going to be 60-40, And that is what being in a partnership is, right? You're going to pick up the slack. You're going to help that other person out because you love and you care for them. And you recognized that whoever that that other partner was, was not sharing the same views. And you realize that you deserve more. You're worth more than that. And I love the fact that you came to that conclusion, Holly, because it's absolutely true. Now, for anybody else that's out there listening in that finds themselves... In a similar position that you were in, going through that time, what are some words of wisdom that you may be able to offer someone that finds themselves at a crossroads where they're in a relationship and it's not coming to that satisfactory point and they feel like they may be getting taken advantage of a little bit? What are some words of wisdom that you can offer, Holly? Believe in yourself. Just believe in yourself and who you Mm. are. If you know who you are, that's all that matters. And if the person you're with doesn't match, I can't give specific advice because every situation is different. Yeah, but course. just look inside, inside your soul and you know what the right thing to do is. Mm-hmm. No one has to tell you. You know, Holly, listen, we know about how this book came about, right? And the circumstances in your life that really drove you toward it. But when it comes to writing, when it comes to being an author, I mean, what inspired you to embark upon this creative journey and become a writer? Well, I said it started in, um, when I was in high school. I had a creative writing teacher in high school, Gary Blankenberg. He was a famous poet himself. Um, he encouraged all the students. He actually date, encouraged us all to date ourselves. He said, you know, if you don't love you, then, then who else will? So um, I guess that's where I got my concept of love from. And uh, he wrote this book, Adventures of Mr. Electric. He passed away 2020. Uh, I was going to go and, and see him for the class reunion so many times. I've been out of high school for 30 years, but um, I've never, I never went back and I never got to saw him and he died. So this is something, another lesson for the audience that um, if you love someone and you want to see them, don't put it off because you never know when, when they'll be gone. He's one, he's one, he's, he inspired me. He, he was a writer and he said that his dream house was in the middle of the woods where you would drive up to some place and have to walk two miles to get to his house and then he would put electric fence all around it so nobody would go and bother him. Uh, he, he was he was quite eccentric and I, I 
I aspire to be like him. Mm-hmm. Holly, listen, my listening audience is going to get very upset with me if I don't ask this next one, okay? So let's move it right along here. We know that this is a poetry book compiled of a lot of poems that you've written. I would love to take this opportunity. Holly, if you have a poem readily available that you can pull from and read for us, myself, my listening audience, we are all ears. I'll just pick a random one. Don't ask what you do not want to know. Questions reveal truth that should be left unknown. Fear runs in circles. Death is certain. Life is not. A search for light turns into fight for life. What is life? What is the truth? How can we appreciate life without feeling the hot breath of darkness constantly on our backs, keeping us down? Who made us and put us here can free our hearts, our minds, yet where do we search? Where do we find this being or beings? Why search when they have always been inside? We should focus on our commonalities instead of our differences. Life is fast in perspective. Looking back, we can be more objective. Looking forward, we think more of death. Try to find what was always there. I look and I look, and I find tears, pain, and destruction. Death is priceless, just as life. You cannot have one without the other. Free me, kill me. I desire nothing in life. I only want peace and death. Well, that did take a dark turn, but that's one of the poems in the book. (laughs) <laughs> Listen, Holly, you know what? I love that poem, and I'm so glad that you chose that one. And here's why. It took a dark turn. Sure. Listen, there's dark parts to life. But this is what I love so much about it. There was, in my apologies, because I'm paraphrasing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can't remember the exact quotation, but it was something along the lines of, what is life without death, right? Or without the hot breath of death, I believe was the way you had worded it. But the way I took that, And why I think that that is so important and so powerful is, listen, I learned very early, um, probably in my my late teens, that I shifted my focus, right? And I know we're talking about love here, but this is bigger than love, right? You're talking about life right there. And I remember I started to examine life as there are no wins and losses in life, okay? Okay. There are wins and lessons. And every single thing, no matter how dark or how bleak a situation may be, and I listen, po- people believe me, I understand I'm oversimplifying right now. For the sake of the interview, an oversimplification is what's needed. But when we're talking about you can't appreciate life without death, that works with everything. That works with the antithesis of everything. You can't appreciate sunshine without a little bit of snow or rain, right? You can't appreciate heartbreak without love. You understand that when you have the antithesis to those things, that is when you truly start to put things in perspective And you understand the lessons to be gained. And from those lessons, you acquire wisdom. That is life. Listen, Holly, that poem was fantastic. And it symbolizes so much. I absolutely love it, people. That is a brief, a brief, brief view into the book ahead. You know what you got to do. Amazon and Barnes & Noble are where you have to go. You got to head on over there and pick up your copies. I don't know what else to tell you. Holly, as we start to close out, because I do want to leave some time, because I know you have another book that you've written. But as we close out of the struggle to find true love, curiosity for myself with this next one, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing the book? Or if not a highlight, something that surprised you that you weren't anticipating before you began? Well, at first, I wasn't even anticipating writing the book. I was just... um journaling, writing how I felt, yeah. and then I put it together and said, hey, you know what, let me write a book, because I did it before. So uh, I thought, you know, let me just try it and see what happens. Uh, the book I wrote before this, The Journey Back to Home, is not available on Amazon, but I plan on making a second making a second edition, like changing things around and making mm-hmm. a second edition to update to who I am today, because I wrote that book in 2002. Whether it started through an experience that you were utilizing as therapeutic for yourself or cathartic for yourself, there's no denying your artistry, okay? And I absolutely love the fact that you took it to that extent and published it out because now 
the public gets to, to benefit from this magnificent gift as well. Now, Holly, you just touched up on another book that you have written, and you're getting ready to publish a second edition, right? an updated copy of it. It's called The Journey Back to Home, or A Journey Back to Home. Talk to us a little bit more about that book and what it entails, please. Well, that, that book is more about how people live, and they forget where they came from. So, like... We have to stop as we get older and remember who we were and who we wanted to be so that we can close the gap and, and, and reach our full full potential to uh, manifest uh, what we wanted when we were kids now that we have the resources as adults to actually do it. Holly, listen, as we close out of this wonderful interview, I can think of no better way to do so than with another one of your fantastic poems. So please, listen, if you have another one readily available to pull from, Let's go back to the struggle to find true love. Read us another one of your poems, please. Okay, remember. Remember, life is a journey. There's a man who possesses my mind, my heart, and my soul. Or so, should I say, there's a man who frees my mind and my heart and my soul. He did it in an unconscious way. Nevertheless, he did it. The sensations of a mid-spring day come to mind. The fresh air cooling down my desires to always be on the move. Every day I feel calmer. Every day I feel at peace, knowing that God will never leave me. God will never leave us. Life is a journey, not a race. We all need to participate. We all need to slow down and realize that the only way to win the race is not to run. The only thing that I can think of to say is could we have done a better job of selecting the more perfect embodiment of a person of distinction to be on our network? I think not. Holly is speaking absolute gems here with these poems and we've covered two of them amazon barnes and noble the struggle to find true love head on over there you're going to be greeted with so much more this book is amazing whether you're in love at the moment whether you're still searching for it or you're just getting out of it there is something for everyone here in it and i'm telling you do yourself a favor this is a wonderful resource to add to your shelf an even better gift to add to someone else's. You know where to go. Head on over there, pick up your copies today, and you can thank me later. Holly, this has been an absolute pleasure. Such an honor. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. All right, thanks for having me here today. I enjoyed it as well.